Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas Parish. Today is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our intention for this Mass is for Raphael R. Ralph Wishart and Aaron Mack. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father A.
name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That we're all called to follow Jesus is to Jesus' no surprise. The sacramentally sealed call is operative for as long as we live. We also know that accepting it has implications we will only discover as we go. Today's readings remind us that, that calls can be unexpected, demanding, even dangerous. But Paul assures us that freedom, love, and the Spirit's guidance are all part of it. Lord Jesus, you chose dangerous, difficult paths on your journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you challenged the others to follow you without hesitation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your call to follow comes to each and every one of us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You will see at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat and Adamahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit against the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposite of each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the law. The Lord be with you. A uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resoundly determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him, because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to them, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered them, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. So he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, that the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a few people saying in the back, if you're interested, this whole second pew is open. So if you wanted to see, uh, you're certainly welcome to, to come up. There's uh, three things today that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first and most importantly, the overturn of Roe versus Wade. And secondly, I want to talk about the retreat I was on two weeks ago. And then third, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Eucharist, Eucharistic procession that took place a week ago on uh, Saturday. Uh, First, uh, Roe versus Wade, certainly I never thought this was going to take place. I never ever thought it was going to happen in my lifetime. Uh, when all that was taking place with Roe versus Wade, you know, certainly legalization abortion, took place back in 1973. And at the same time I was in college, I was in college the whole uh, 70s, 75, right in that particular area. And so I was fortunate in the colleges that I was in, uh, there was a consistent message that was coming across that this is a 
It's a precious life. It's human life from the very beginning. So I've never wavered from that. I was fortunate I had good moral teachers, and there was a lot of talk at that particular time. Um, it, it's amazing that they're able to overcome that. Now what happens, well, speaking in the verses, we know there's always not that consistent teaching on life. And that, out there in the world, and you're hearing all different things, uh, and that's part of the problem. Now it goes back to states. And now they say it could be anywhere from 13 to 20, we'll have to see how many that, that the ban will take place. Uh, but lives will be saved. There's one estimate, we don't know, that there'll be at least 100,000 lives will be saved. We wish there was more. We certainly wish there was more would take place. We wish there was no abortion. But this is definitely, no question about it, is a victory. So all those marches people were involved with, all the prayers and everything else is certainly uh, uh, has paid off. The second thing I want to talk about is just the retreat I was on. And I've often mentioned when the priest goes on the retreat, or Deacon goes on the retreat, doesn't just go for himself, he goes for the parish. All right, so I'd like to bring back what happened on the, on the retreat. Now, as I called up to make the reservations, I wonder what's, what it's about, and they said the theme is actually how to minister as a priest in a polarized church. I said, I don't know, I'm not so crazy about that. Is this a workshop, or is this an institute, or is this a retreat? And I talked to the secretary and said, yes, this is a retreat. I said, okay, I'll be coming. Uh, I'll sign me up. Um, I had concerns, especially that particular topic. I mean, St. Paul can't bring about unity. Um, so, but I didn't hear the Holy Spirit say no, not to go. And so I said, well, I'm going to go. I will go. Now, the first two days of the retreat, I found myself a little bit down, a little bit depressed. And I don't usually get very depressed. All my concerns about going on this retreat, every single one of them came true. Every single one of them. And then others on top of that. Um, much emphasis on polarization and the problems of the church. And then even the table conversations with the other priests and deacons, they were not always uplift, uplifting. Uh, talking about the problems in the parishes, problems in the diocese, problems in the universal church. So I'm up there the second night, the Tuesday night, I'm sitting up in my room, and I'm saying to myself, what am I doing here? Why am I here? I felt like packing my bags and just leaving. I'm not feeling at peace with God. I'm not feeling the, the serenity that's supposed to come from the retreat. It's just the opposite, and I was a little bit down from the whole situation. I didn't leave. I never left a retreat before, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, it ended up being a good retreat. Uh, Wednesday, uh, the talks were better, and then Thursday, the talks also were much better. The table conversations became much lighter, and I found myself taking a lot of notes. So I'm taking a lot of notes, uh, good things are being said. Uh, now certain things, this is a tough one. We'll talk about unity. I mean, it, this is a tough one. Uh, but there are certain things that we're able to do. And we know that the civil wars are actually the bloodiest of them all. So when things are taking place right within the church, it can be very, very bloody. And he mentioned, the, the retreat master mentioned that there was conflicts in the church from the very beginning. One of the earliest councils was the Council of Jerusalem. And the discussion was, was circumcision necessary for the Gentile converts? So a lot of debates, a lot of arguing, a lot of uh, heated arguments over that whole thing. So from the very beginning, uh, there was a little bit of disunity. We can say without a doubt, what unites us is more important than what separates us. No question, what unites us is much more than what separates us. All of us are sinful, we have limited judgments, and we're not always right. Um, the way that we perceive things. And he went, the uh, retreat master, to out to the priests and deacons. How do we fit into this puzzle? Are we causing polarization ourselves? So I throw it out to you. The same question is asked to yourselves. Are you causing any polarization? There are disagreements, certainly, but it become a personal issue, and it can become an attack on the personal integrity of the person. We need to be deeply respectful of each individual. There can also be the demonization of people. 
We demonize them. This could be a, a bigger problem of polarization, that we demonize someone that we do not agree with. A lot of times it'll come upon, is a person conservative or is a person liberal? More importantly, is a person flexible or inflexible? I know one of the uh, parishes I was at, there was one priest who was in the parish, very conservative. He was, he was an arch conservative in many different ways. But if you listen to his homilies, and I listened to a few of them, they were neither right nor were they left. It was a great explanation of the scripture readings. But some people just labeled him. They did not like the idea he was very conservative, and they lost out. Well, he was very bright, and they could have learned, but they just said, uh, uh, he has nothing to offer us, and that was a shame. What, it can, what can happen, it becomes us against them. You're bad, and I am good. You're the enemy. You're not my brothers and my sisters, but you are my enemy. And that's where the problem comes in. God is the real source of our, our unity, and we have to depend upon him. We're called to be bridges. Now, one of the things that he spent a little bit of time on, which I'll go into, I thought it was very good, is that we need to approach the other person from the core of our being, uh, respond from our very core. That's where God dwells. God dwells at the very core of our being. The most direct route to overcome polarization when we do that, when we go from our core, we become more welcoming as a result of it. God dwells deep within us, and that's where we're going to be able to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We can bring peace to people, gentleness, generosity, mildness. All the fruits of the Holy Spirit come from the core of our being. It's very important. At that core, God lives, he dwells. And that divinity is unmarred by any human experiences. It's not been scarred by our human experiences. And we all have scars. No one goes through life without having a lot of scars. I mean, the, the, the divinity is not touched at all by those scars. And that's why we have to go and let the God flow from that core. Deep within us, God is timeless, he's pure, and certainly he's all holy. Every fiber is alive by the glory of God. So living from our core, helps us to deal with the polarized church, that the divine beauty shine forth. You all of you, every single one of you, have that divine beauty, so continue to let it shine forth. The last thing, I just briefly, I want to talk about the, uh, the great experience we had on Saturday night up on the Atlantic City Boardwalk. Each parish is expected to go and have ten different uh, people, ten people from each parish, and we had to send the names up to them. And so 62 parishes, like about a thousand people. Uh, I was very proud of our parish here. We had over 20. We had over 20 that went up there. So it was very nice to be able to have that nice group. There were, there, we had the procession with the Blessed Sacrament. So we're actually processing with God. Powerful experience. There were three different stations that we stopped to pray. The first of them is when we had the Filipinos and then also uh, we had the uh, Vietnamese. The Vietnamese woman, they had a dance and there was, they had certain prayers. Then we went to the second station. And the second station was actually for the Hispanics. So that was in Spanish. The third station was all the way down by the start of the Memphis Avenue, I think it was Tennessee Avenue. And we went all the way down to the convention center. So that one was in English and the bishop had, uh, he had the uh, Bless the sacrament, and we had benediction at that particular time to be able to conclude it. Very good experience. We talked about unity. Everybody was completely united. There was complete oneness there. You know, with all the different cultures were present, there was no liberals, no conservatives, there wasn't even in anyone's mind. It was just complete oneness at that particular time. So it was a very good experience. And the unity, the true unity, can come through the Eucharist. And that's where and we were certainly united by that. So we're very happy. You know, we had such a great turnout, good pictures and everything uh, from it. And some people want to have this again. So it'll start a three-year process now, just gearing in on the Eucharist and on the real presence of the Lord.
Please stand and we'll have a seat. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God from God, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things to be made, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended from heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all who are called to difficult journeys and tasks. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church has been struggled for the meaning of discipleship in every age and especially for its call to accountability, transparency, and reform at this time in history. For those hesitant to engage in living the gospel fully who may be reluctant to let go of what is comfortable and for a willingness to change, we pray. Lord, have your For the courage to examine what love of neighbor really means in this divisive time, especially when we are called to love those whom we disagree, those we fear, and those who have hurt us. For an end to racism worldwide, we pray. Lord, have your For all whose discipleship calls them into the public area, who risk their reputation and lives or take difficult stands on behalf of the common good for the safety of our first responders, military troops, and essential workers, we pray. Lord, you are here. For those who follow the call to discipleship, through caring for those in need, resisting injustice, or dealing kindly with difficult people, that our world may understand St. Paul's teachings on the meaning of freedom and never use it as a justification for abortion or any kind of wrongdoings, we pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. For all those who responded so generously in the past to the house of charity, for the sick and dying, for the eradication of the coronavirus worldwide, for those who have died, especially Raphael, Octavel, Wishart, and Alan Mack, who are being remembered during this Mass. Also, please remember John Carapatoni, who died recently, we pray. Lord, you are here. Loving God, bless all our families and help them uh, to lead their children to you. Give them wisdom and strength when they face difficulties and fill their homes with joy. Help us to reach out to them in love and concern and to embrace them fully in our parish community. Accept this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
charity forms are in the pews. If you wish to make a donation, you may place the card in the collection basket or drop it off at the church office. Thank you for your generosity. Our 50-50 tickets are available for purchase at the parish office throughout the week. 20 per, 20 tick, 20 per ticket when purchased are when purchased at one time. Your name will be placed in a special drawing for the $200 gift certificate for Doc's Oyster House restaurant. 50-50 tickets and drawing will be held on August the 19th during the parish chicken barbecue. Please take home a bulletin for all pertinent information concerning our parish activities. Thank you. This one gave a little bit of an update for the half the charity. Uh, we're certainly really doing good. Uh, we got out of the gate fast, and we're going to a good pace. We've only been going for four or five weeks, and probably, probably about 70% there already. Uh, so we thank you. We just have to uh, keep up that pace. I've noticed that sometimes it happens. Once we get up to about 80%, we still need 20, 25,000, somewhere it's around there or so. Uh, then it slows down. So we want to keep this pace up, and then we can go and close that finish line, knowing that we've been able to do our share uh, to help all the people here in the South Jersey. So again, we're doing good, and let's just let's keep it up. Pray, my brother and sister, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of those sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you lay the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and for every for, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Dennis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. For the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, with the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Saved command informed by the Constitution, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
Lord, restore, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always, free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, said the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Mass is ended. Go in peace.